Uh, so, uh, as Eric mentioned, my name is Jeff Mixer. I'm a research engineer uh, in the Office of Research. Um, and I'm going to be talking today about uh, a project that uh, colleagues and I have been working on for about the past uh, nine months to a year. Um, and uh, before I start, it is important to, uh, to mention, I think, that uh, this project is built on sort of a linked data foundation that we've been working on for the past four or five years. Um, so we're, the, you know, the idea of the title, turning, making data actionable, uh, so the past five years or so, we've been creating a lot of linked data, whether it be VOF, FAST, uh, works, persons, et cetera. Now we're looking at how can we actually take that data and make it usable uh, not only to the end user, uh, but also within actual uh, library applications and services. Um, and uh, I should also want to mention that uh, the, the, um, the topic, this sort of knowledge vault I'm going to be discussing is sort of built on um, uh, the foundation, uh, foundational Google work that they've been working on or had been working on over the past two or three years. Um, and here's just a, a reference of uh, three or four, four articles that have been uh, published about this topic. So um, uh, the, the first part of this, uh, the project is this idea of creating a, a knowledge vault or a knowledge pipeline for information. Um, and uh, for the context of Google, what they are interested in doing is being able to more intelligently harvest data off the web, uh, aggregate it together, sort of crunch through it, and then sort of create uh, this fusion process where they could extract from the vast amount of web pages that they're crawling information that they consider to be truthful. Um, so you could imagine, you know, very basic things like statements about people, like when someone was born, when someone died, a short biography about them, um, and take this information, put it into a, uh, you know, a knowledge vault, as they call it, and then be able to make it um, uh, usable to the end user. Um, so what we at OCLC were interested in doing is seeing whether we could take that sort of same pipeline process and adapt it for use uh, in bibliographic and authority data. Um, and we're also interested in seeing whether we could also then um, sort of expand it a little bit further to allow for user contributed information uh, as well as outside web information to be pipe pumped into this pipeline and then processed the exact same way. So the idea was at the end we could have a, you know, our own bibliographic knowledge vault um, that could help expand and enhance the, uh, the end user's experience in trying to search, discover, and interact with library information. So uh, just to go over a, a very quick diagram of how, how this sort of process works is um, uh, on, on the left you can see sort of data sources. We have WorldCat, uh, VOF, FAST, and what we're able to do is extract information out of them. Um, so for example, WorldCat, or for VOF, we could extract um, preferred labels of a given author. And then from the WorldCat data, uh, we could actually extract the relationships that those all you know, these people or whatever might have to bibliographic information. Um, so you can just quickly begin to see the, the value of this. So from, you know, again, from an authority file, you can get all the important authority information. From a bibliographic data set, you can extract what that person wrote, what was written about them. Um, and then in this middle section, uh, labeled knowledge triples, what we can do is um, with assigning provenance to all of these statements that we're extracting from their various data sources, uh, we can begin to build uh, a confidence score in these. So something coming from an authority file, let's say a person's uh, label in uh, French or German or Russian, we can assume it's going to be very, very high, a high level of confidence associated with it because it's been sort of hand curated by uh, an authority's librarian. Um, Conversely, with like WorldCat information, or more importantly, from information you're aggregating outside uh, the bibliographic domain or from a user, you might have some suspect there. Um, so, did they, you know, did, was a subject heading sort of fat fingered when the catalog record was made? Um, was a user, um, you know, did they mistype the date when they had someone's uh, death date, for example? Um, what we can do is begin to um, across the entire corpus of all the information we're aggregating, compare um, competing statements. So if someone said uh, this person died in 1997 and 500 other people said this person died in 1897, we can begin to assume that this was just a typo on the part of that one uh, individual or cataloger or whomever it happened to be. And then what we can do, this final process, uh, this fusion process, is basically just pure mathematics, where we compare, we vet all the scores we've created in this middle section, and then from there we can distill this set of uh, statements that we think are truthful enough to um, then uh, push on to applications via web pages, um, services um, that end users can then interact with. 
So just briefly to go over sort of just an example of this sort of extraction phase, which I understand is kind of, kind of weird and abstract, but hopefully this will um, help, uh, help explain it a little bit. Um, so again, starting on the left, we have this sort of mark record thing. Um, and then before we even get to the sort of extraction and turning this stuff into uh, linked data triples, one of the most important steps is uh, this enhancement phase. So as OCLC gets bibliographic records, there's an enhancements process that goes on. And some of the things we add are further clustering. So we can you know, begin to say that you know, these 500 bibliographic descriptions that we just um, ingested are all related to Huck Finn, the work Huck Finn, let's say. Um, and secondly, for the purposes of creating linked data, what we can do is we go through and for all of the subject headings, personal names, and things like that we find in a mark record, we're able to go off to authority files such as FAST or VOF and match labels to identifiers. So what we can do then is we put those identifiers back in the bibliographic information. So when we then go through the process of, um, of decomposing these into entities, we can have a common identifier across the entire corpus of bibliographic data. So, so now that we've gone through the enhancement phase, we sort of go into the more um, detailed uh, converting a mark record into linked data. Um, so just very highly, you know, high level explanation. From all these mark records that now have these identifiers in them, we can parse out all of the, let's say, people, concepts, organizations, et cetera, et cetera, across all the records. And then we can basically do a reduce job on that. So across all the records, if one record said, here's a person's name, another record said, you know, they were born on this date, and another record said they died on this date, all three not having the information from the others, we can sort of aggregate that all together and create a distinct description of a person. Um, and then from there, we can take all of those individual entities and their descriptions and turn them into individual statements. Um, so you can see it's sort of like an exponential, in terms of the amount of data you're working with, it's sort of this exponential increase as you go from a record, decompose into individual entities, and de then decompose even further into these individual statements, like my name is, I was born here, I died here, et cetera. So now that we have this sort of um, you know, preliminary knowledge vault, um, so the second phase of the research was, so what? Um, you know, what can we do with it now? And I think that's one of, been one of the struggles we've had over the past three or four years with our linked data is what can we actually do with it? I don't, I don't see the benefit to uh, my library, to the end user, et cetera. So we wanted to create a, uh, a prototype application that sort of um, demoed how we could use our linked data to allow people to discover um, explore and begin to interact with the data we've been creating. Uh, so we, the prototype that, um, application we created we called EntityJS. And uh, again, because I like diagrams, just a sort of high level overview of how it works. Uh, from our WorldCat data, we took a subset, um, an arch archival subset of, of that information. It's actually uh, the archive, if anyone's familiar with archive grid, um, it's the data that drives archive grid. So we took that information, and again, as I uh, talked on the previous few slides, we went through this process. We have these, um, this data now in you know, a vault. And then uh, starting with the prototype application, we built these uh, vault services. And again, a kind of an abstract term. You can imagine the vault services being APIs. So um, canned Sparkle queries into our triple store, or canned queries to the index that we use to make these things discoverable. And then the application itself talks to those, which it then you know, talks back to the knowledge vault. And because this is all linked data, what we can then do is the application can then go off to the web and aggregate even more information for the end to display to the end user. So for example, if we have um, you know, a VOF person that has a link to Wikipedia, we can go off and grab the description from Wikipedia, we can grab images from uh, Wikimedia Commons and things like that. And then to begin to prototype this, allowing people to interact with our data, we actually uh, built in this feedback loop where people can begin to give us corrections or additional information such as, um, you know, this person actually didn't die you know, on this such, such and such a date, they died on this other date. Um, so what we can begin to do is pump that back into our application, back into our data, and then uh, subsequently all of this information can flow back into this sort of pipeline process. So it's sort of this very much this iterative um, enhancement 
display, re-enhancement, et cetera, et cetera. So just to quickly go over sort of how the application works, um, when you load the page, you basically get this blank, you know, start typing here box. Um, and then as you start typing, um, we, OCLC has identified sort of six entities that they're interested in. Now uh, you can see them listed uh, and labeled there. Uh, what we start providing the end user is as you're typing suggested search results. Um, and again, because we were aggregating this information from WorldCamp, uh, one of the things we were able to do was um, add a sort of a, a rudimentary page rank to all these results. Um, so uh, as you're typing in LO, or excuse me, uh, Lincoln, um, L-I-N, you can start seeing in the top, and it's difficult to see probably for folks in the back, the top results for persons are Abraham Lincoln, Mary Todd Lincoln, um, a Lincoln I'd never heard of, uh, and then Robert Todd Lincoln. Um, and what that is symbolic uh, of is that those three entities are the most popularly used entities across the subset of bibliographic information we're using. Um, and you know, this might seem uh, a bit rudimentary and a bit straightforward, but we did find, uh, compared to just using just basic text, text indexing results that you might get from your actual like Lucene database, this much, much improved the, um, the ability for a user to quickly find what they're looking for without having to type in an entire name. So Premier, once you find an entity, uh, you can click on them. And then, um, as I mentioned, because this is uh, linked data, the application live, without having any cached information in, back in the database, can go out to the web and just start grabbing information. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the image from Wikimedia, you can see the description from Wikipedia, um, you can see um, further down in the description, we can actually grab familiar relations from Wikidata, which, um, you know, again, allows people to sort of expand and explore throughout the graph. And um, most interesting, we can have uh, related entities. So you can start to see related works. At the bottom is related people, organization, places. And again, uh, like with the original, initial searching, this is all uh, page ranked. So I believe um, if you look at uh, related people for Robert Todd Lincoln, the top two related people are his father, Abraham Lincoln, and his mother, Mary Todd Lincoln. So uh, we found that across entities, this is very useful. Um, so I think if you do a search for Abraham Lincoln, Mary Todd, uh, and Robert Todd are up there, as are sort of other well-known sort of Civil War era people like uh, William Tecumseh Sherman, let's say. Um, so, again, relying on this ranking, we were able to provide the user with the ability to sort of discover what had traditionally been um, visualized as that sort of uh, dot matrix chart where you have a node connected to another node and it's just sort of that's how you navigate through a graph. Uh, we tried to take that um, and put it into a more traditional user interface that uh, hopefully would allow people to um, engage in the same type of graph navigation, but without having to actually look at a visualization chart. So um, the last thing we've done is for some of our entities, we don't have links out to Wikipedia. Uh, so for example, this uh, Casablanca conference, a fast heading doesn't have a link. Um, so what we actually added was a API that makes a call out to Wikipedia, and then we can actually ask the user, hey, we don't really have any other information about this thing other than its name uh, and what it's related to. Is this Casablanca conference the same as any of these Wikipedia things? And then the user can then click on any of those items there, and as soon as they do that, uh, we put back into our data set feedback loop a, a relationship saying that this person has said that this fast topic is the same as this other thing. And then the page actually just automatically updates. So as soon as you click on that, it's gonna go out and grab the description, it'll grab images, and um, from there we can just put that back in the pipeline. So uh, this prototype's actually being uh, released uh, very shortly. We're gonna have to do a prototype um, with uh, a, a limited access use to it. Um, but you know, as we begin to get feedback on that, hopefully what we're gonna be able to do is improve the ability to edit things. So as opposed to just making same as statements, uh, relationships, uh, we can add pe allow people to actually edit names, descriptions, birth date, death dates, things like that. Um, and then the other thing that we're very interested in doing is working more closely with some of our uh, production colleagues to see some of these technologies and applications uh, sort of make it over the prover proverbial wall into uh, production. So if anyone has any questions, they can contact myself or uh, my partner, uh, Bruce Washburn.